I'm going to make go on right now. Staff and management of Radio One and sponsors or advertisers. Hey, that's not running. That's not running. I got it. You put it in. The volume was off. No, this one. What's not running? Here? One out. See, it ain't. It ain't go. It ain't click on yet. Facebook. Maybe they can't see it. And plus. Over here. Oh, okay. Not Yeah, that's right, folks. I'm here live in the building in the studio of Radio One Baltimore. That's right. If you need to call in, call us number 1 877 704 That's our long distance if you're out there. You? And our local number is 410-481-1010. And we're streaming worldwide wherever. That's www.wolbbaltimore.com. And also, folks, we have somebody special in the studio. Name is Charlie. What's up, Mr. Charlie? Good afternoon. It's a lovely day out, lovely winter day. <laughs> right, right on, right on. A pleasure to be talking to you all. Um, I was hoping we could talk about our public officials in a positive way today. Uh, some of them are getting a bad rap, and uh, it's a difficult job. Wow. You you mean talk about the public officials, like the mayor, the councilman, and who else? Well, and our ex-mayor, uh, Stephanie Rawlings Blake, who mm -hmm. who's got, she's got a bad rap given to her about the um, the unrest and the riots. Really? I think I've read all the stuff that's written in Wikipedia, and they're debating it mm. and, and and all of that. But we, by the way, we're going to call her SRB for, uh, apparently now. Uh -huh. uh, because that's a long name, but... Uh, so we talk about our former mayor, Stephanie Rollins Blake. Exactly right. She I was, didn't know she was getting a bad rap. Well, they they blamed her for the destruction and, the, and, and some of the aftermath of the riot, mm -hmm. I thought, and uh, she decided not to run for election, because, for re-election, uh, after... Uh, because the election would have become a referendum on people's unhappiness with the riot. Mm -hmm. But she did, she did a wonderful, remarkable thing. She saved the city. From my way of thinking, they, she is the savior of Baltimore. Wow, she saved us, you say that again. She thank did you. save our city. Thank you, we could have had a terrible riot. The history of riots, uh, if we look at the history of urban riots, which mm -hmm. I checked this out, and I, the, uh, uh, in great detail this afternoon, mm, and uh, if, if it would had been like uh, the 1992 riot after Rodney King uh, uh, beating, and, uh, there were um, 63 deaths and um, uh, and 12,000 arrests. Now it is a bigger city, but our unrest, our riot, only had 480. Uh, arrests and no loss of life wow. now, no loss of life what a miracle it is that she she uh, declared peace mm -hmm. she declared a truce between the police department and and the people and she and Marilyn Mosby saved us from a terrible a much more terrible possibility what do you think might have would have happened if they them two wouldn't saved us from the riot well 1968 Baltimore had a, had a riot uh, with uh, six dead and uh, and 5,000 arrests. Now, some of us, I'm an old man, so uh -huh. I can remember that. That's that's a lot of a lot of violence, and we had the National Guard. I can remember. Back in 1968. Yes. Wow. So basically, the same thing might what could have happened if it weren't for Stephanie Rollins Blake and Marilyn Mosby. Thank you. I agree with that. Yes, indeed. Uh, also, 
uh, I was looking at um, uh, what happened in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. uh, Mayor Wilson Good uh, dealt with some unrest, and um, he made some bad decisions. He unleashed a, a competent and uh, uh, a very good police department. We have a very good police department here, uh, by the way. Uh, why, why did you say that? Because a lot of people don't think we have a good police department here. <clears throat> and you tell me your reason why is Baltimore City Police Department so good? Well, <clears throat> in your words. Thank you so much. Well, <clears throat> I don't think... <clears throat> I don't think we could live five minutes in this city without police. Okay, that's true. This is a dangerous city. <clears throat> and if you're going to put on a uniform and put yourself in the way of harm to protect other people, God bless you. Mm. Okay? Now, there are problems, and the consent decree is a necessary and appropriate remedy, and I'm glad we have it. And that's point number two for Stephanie Rawlings Blake, is that she nurtured this consent decree through when it got challenged. And the Attorney General of the United States almost killed it. Attorney General Sessions put limitations on a consent decree, but she stuck it through all the way to December at the tail end of her, um, of her uh, mayoralty mm -hmm. and got it signed. And so we've, we've got this. We've got, uh, after 150 years of problems, we've got the forms in place, overseen by a competent and honest United States judge, Judge Bidar. I did sit through a whole day of sessions with uh, Judge Bidar overlooking the, uh, the consent decree's progress, and um, he's an impressive guy, I have to say. Um, he, um, he heard from all parties, from the apologists and the, and the challengers, from the community, from Mr. Kelly, Ray Kelly out in West Baltimore, <clears throat> and he warned everybody that if we don't get this done, he will do it. And he has the power to take this police department over and appoint his own uh, his own heads of department and everything else. Thanks for asking me, though. Oh, yeah. No, no, no question. So what do you think, um, Stephanie Robin Blake, what, what's she going to do these days? Does she have anything planned to do? I, I haven't got to talk to her recently, but she, the mayor has elected her. The, I think she's a chairwoman and um, chairwoman of the... Uh, National Mayor's Conference. That, that's right. You're right. You did your homework. <laughs> you did your homework. She she's still doing that. She's the national. Uh, she the national. She the national. What? Chair. I think it's the chairwoman. Yeah, talking to the mic. Uh, chair chairwoman. A lot yeah. of work to do. <laughs> so that's national, huh? So tell us about Donald Trump. Oh well, you, do you think he's still going to be elected, or he might be elected, or they're going to impeach him? What's your opinion? I I don't I don't know. I haven't got a crystal ball. You don't? <clears throat> no, oh, no. The goodness. Senate could kill this thing on 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 uh, on arrival, but um, he did do something very very good, uh, I think. Oh my goodness! You saying Donald Trump did something good? Yeah, but well, 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 most us. everything, but a lot of other stuff got done wrong. I can't really agree with. A lot of his policies and pulling out of treaties and the like, but he came to Baltimore mm -hmm. and the Republicans were meeting at the at the uh, Waterfront Marriott Hotel right. on September the 13th. I was down there. You, you go to that? I was outside. I couldn't get in. I see. Well, inside, at the end of a long speech. Was you in there? No, no. But I I brought an article which I've given you, which is right. some people wrote it up. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it. that. Pardon? What happened? So the the. Um, president said, uh, we are going to fight for cities like Baltimore, uh, which have been destroyed by uh, uh, failed and bad policies, failed and bad rule, mm -hmm. that's what it said, by failed and bad and, and corrupt rule, failed and corrupt, those are the words he used. Now that's pretty heavy epaulets to lace on any kind of uh, city. Yeah, really. Failed and corrupt. Failed and corrupt. Wow. And I don't think he was just talking about uh, Sheila Dixon, whose infractions were really minor in a way, mm -hmm. uh, or Catherine Pugh, which we don't have any idea what she did because nobody is telling us what, uh, if she's going to be charged with anything or not. Well, you know, uh, um, Catherine Pugh, we should say former mayor, right? 
Uh, yeah, she have not been seen in a long time. You think she's still around in town? Good questions. You, good questions. I'm I'm a blind guy, so I, I don't. I don't. Oh, are I you can't blind? Tell, I'm totally blind. Me. Yes, I am. Should I say vision impaired or blind? Vision impaired. So either blind's fine. Okay. You don't have a stick. I've got a stick hidden in my bag. Why you have it in your bag? I well, didn't know you was blind. I go by by hearing. Okay. All of us should go by hearing a little bit more than we do. So, millennials don't listen. Right. So you saying that you haven't seen what you said you can't see anyway <laughs> if if so, um Catherine Pierce is still in the city of Baltimore. Yeah, I heard that she's probably in, in, in depression and shock about what, what's happened to her, but what she's done has been done by lots of people. Newt Gingrich had to leave Congress because he was selling books on the side. Who? Newt Gingrich. Was selling books? Yeah. How come it, nobody said nothing about that? Oh, it, it got said, but it, it was he sort of disappeared a, at the uh, the right time. Somewhere mm -hmm. in 1999 or so, he stopped running to be um, uh, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. And, and you can hear him on the radio from time to time, but if you go sell uh, books to people who are trying to get by influence from you, there's a little gray area there. Wow. So, so tell us about, okay, so we got the Donald Trump, we got the Captain Perry, we got the Stephanie Rowland Blake, uh, we got to the police department. What about the eyes in the sky? Now, everybody is, they really was jumping on me yesterday. What was it? Day before yesterday, somebody jumped on me and uh, said that, you know, I'm supporting, yeah, I am supporting eyes in the sky. If something better for the city that can deter people from committing a crime, so, so be it. So <laughs> for someone to say my head should be under will, Something like that. It's incredible. I, I thought it was, I don't know, but. Thank you. I, I was similarly moved. I, I thought it, it, criticism wasn't necessarily, uh, wasn't kindly, but um, <clears throat> but it was apropos. I think uh, uh, I listened as well to uh, Reverend David Johnson, mm -hmm. who is a, uh, a powerful speaker and, uh, and a pretty good voice, who has basically a spiritual message, which I appreciate, self-determination and inner directedness. But he doesn't like the eye in the sky and uh, asks questions uh, along the line of... It's, it's only like a handful of people don't like the eyes in the sky, but what I'm saying mm -hmm. is what the host who hosts in this show, what he have to do with people disliking me and having my head in a wheel rolling over something. I mean, just like just like we talking about Donald Trump, right? Yes, Larry. I'm hosting this show about Donald Trump. A lot of people don't like him. A lot of, yeah, I, I'm not I, I'm But not he's sure still the president. He's still the president, right. And I'm still the host. So why can't I ask these questions? Matter of fact, Dr. Ross should be calling in in a minute because he's flying over the city of Baltimore. <laughs> so I want to ask you about the eyes in the sky, what you think about it. If there are controls over the information and who gets it, then it's okay. If there are no controls, uh, I, I think those are the negotiations. And, and Reverend Johnson had one good point, which is that um, there are uh, some portions of the government think that they're better than the people, than us, the, the law enforcement elites, uh, who are not understanding themselves as civilians first and citizens first and law enforcement secondly, mm -hmm. uh, like to uh, have a star chamber and make decisions for us. And that's not our democracy. So he brought up something called ESI, I think it is, Exceptional Secret Information, uh, which sent and, and it's uh, above top secret. It's a level of secrecy which may be immune to freedom of information request. Now that, for me, is scary. So let's, i tell you what. Any question you need to ask, the guy with all the answer, just get ready, I'm getting ready to pull him up. Cool. Soon that plane come around, <laughs> and then when that plane come, I'm a, Dr. Ross gonna get off the plane, and the questions that David Johnson should have asked this guy that I'm getting ready to pull up now. <laughs> and that is Dr. Ross Minut. Dr. Ross Minut! Uh, happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Thank you. I'm also in the studio with 
uh, gentleman, Charles. And Charles, tell us what you do so Dr. Ross not, he, he, he can be familiar with you. Hey, Dr. Ross. Uh, I'm a, um, a citizen in Baltimore City, does commercial real estate. I'm a licensed commercial builder. I've also been... Thank you. And I've also been an observer by invitation at the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council for the 17 years that it functioned uh, before the Governor Hogan pulled the uh, funding. And um, so I've seen how things work and sometimes how they don't work. In Baltimore, that's more often than not, right? Well, we got a good mayor. I love Mighty Jack. And uh, he's got good intentions. And I don't credit any. I, I don't discredit him. Gotcha. Well, again, you know, I, I'm glad to talk with you and stuff like that. We, uh, we're we trying to come in to help the city of Baltimore. And, uh, and, and our goal is to help reduce the major crime rate, to make Baltimore a safer place, to save a lot of lives, um, not just, you know, to keep people from being shot, to be honest with you. I mean, that's our major focus is shootings and murders and stabbings armed robberies, those levels of crimes. And if we can help reduce that in the city of Baltimore, Baltimore should be a safer place, should be a more enjoyable place, should be a better place to raise your kids and families. And you know, I, I heard, overheard just a little bit while I was, while I was waiting there, um, we do have lots of privacy protections in place. I spent a lot of time with the American Civil Liberties Union, briefing them, getting their input, briefing their conferences, getting input from their conferences, building privacy programs associated with that. And I can go into a lot of details. Um, my background, again, I've, I've had top secret clearances before. Um, I currently have a top secret clearance, but that's not the type of stuff. This is all unclassified work. And we don't have any extra people we're working for. We're not gonna sell the data. And all of that gets detailed out in a very detailed memorandum of understanding between us and the city that explicitly lists out the types of crimes, the specific types of crimes that we're allowed to support and those that we aren't. It details out very clearly how we can support public defenders and defense attorneys and how we provide those, those defendants additional analysis and support of their cases in addition to what we do for investigators to help solve the crime in the first place. And uh, again, we've got other lots of limitations on how that data is accessed. We've got a lot of oversight that people, every place my analyst has ever looked is recorded and reviewable by that outside oversight organization. Every track we make to and from the crime scene is a, has to be associated with an approved investigation. All that is reviewable by an outside organization. We're actually providing funding not through us, but from the donor to that outside organization directly so that it's not reliance on us for that funding to provide people to do that oversight and report to the community as well. So those are some of the things that we've done there in order to ensure the protection of people. Uh, we only use our analyst. The police department does not have access to the data other than through our analyst who are under contract with us and sign off that they understand and then train on the privacy programs. And the other aspect is my company has tremendous incentive to do it right because if we screw it up and you know they all, if we screw it up we'll be asked to leave and we can be asked to leave at any time yeah could you only get one one chance the last time we were there that we weren't able to tell people that we were there because two-thirds of what we hope to do is deter people from committing the crimes in the first place and we feel that that's the most important aspect because deterring a crime is worth 10 times what solving a crime is to us i, I had a question Go ahead, Ross, Jason. The, the mayor has been on many radio shows, not here, but has been on many radio shows saying that I'm not stopping the eye in the sky from flying. Why, why not just fly without the city's permission? Well, we one, the, the city leadership really represents to us the community, and or at least it should represent the community. And we've been briefing the community to make sure they understand it. We want to be come in not as a, we're imposing something on you, we want to be, come back because the citizens of Baltimore has asked for us. And we believe that the mayor and the city council ought to be the ones that say yes, but the real fact is, you know, if they're unwilling to say that, that's fine as well. We're happy to 
um, if the commissioner asks us to come back, representing the city of which the last public opinion poll that was done, a scientific poll was done, showed 76% approval of bringing the program back to help reduce the major climate. And right, let's take this call. Oh, go, go ahead, uh, Dr. Wise, you finish? Oh, yeah, that's right. And, and again, you know, the other thing is we do need some access to information. So we need to know where the gunshots go off, where shot spotters in a number of areas in the city that can cue us to where to look. We also need access to the 911 calls that says where an event, a shooting, a murder occurred. Otherwise, we have no idea where to look. Why not just utilize either open data, which everybody now has the citizen app that right. shows them exactly when the 911 calls and the shootings and things are occurring because the open, they're, they're scouring the open data and sharing that through the citizen app. Yeah, but that also is delayed somewhat. Um, we have actually caught up to people live as they fled crime scenes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the longer you wait after the crime, the harder it is to catch up. Right on. All right. And That's... also, a lot of that open data doesn't have specific addresses. It's got kind of neighborhood data. Right. Because one neighborhood day, neighborhood. you write, Dr. Ross, because one day they said uh, assault occurred on 25th and uh, Lock Raven. And I was like one minute away. So. It said it just happened on Citizen Act. So I got there, and like you said, it wasn't even there. The police already been in, gone. So that 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 it wasn't accurate. Let's go to the caller. Caller, you live? How you doing, caller? Turn your radio down. All right, let's let's um come back to them. Actually, your your guest there had some questions. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, uh, it's. It's Dr. McNabb, Dr. Dr. McNutt, uh -huh. Dr. McNutt, very good. All right, could I ask what is your degree? What are you studying? Uh, my PhD is in a program called Technology Management and Policy out of Massachusetts Institute of Technology. So the program is a mixture of a political science, business and engineering program aimed at, redu at bringing technological solutions to difficult social problems. <clears throat> So wow. the area that I decided to focus on was, at first, IEDs, improvised explosive devices in Iraq and Afghanistan, killing our soldiers and killing civilians. And now what I'm focused on is reducing murders and shootings in our inner cities, which I think is one of the most difficult, most challenging problems you could ever address. Uh, thank you. Uh, my own observation is that the drug trade drives the murder rate. No matter what we do, we got to stop the. Um, at some point, the DEA is probably supposed to do that, and um, they don't necessarily do it. And um, there are complaints all the way down from the Senate Judiciary Committee um, and other people in power who say that um, the DEA needs to get fixed. That would probably help us out. Secondly, it's, I like the idea of reducing murders and gunshots. Go ahead. And, and that's really our, I mean, to be honest with you, the drug operations going on in Baltimore, um, while we were flying uh, three years ago, we get 60-some calls for open-air drug sales a mission. But they weren't, uh, I mean, they were priority three to the Baltimore Police Department, where our goal is, is not to deal with those street-level drug addicts and other sorts of stuff. Our goal, our, our mission is to stop the shootings and the murders. So we're not going to be looking for people selling drugs on the street corner. That's not one of the crimes that the Baltimore Police Department has approved or had approved for us to look at. So we're not, we were looking pretty much strictly at shooting some murder. Okay. I'm glad you said that because it seems to me these ACLU uh, guidelines that I've read mm -hmm. require uh, a warrant to be uh, pulled before um, you put a, 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 a low jack or um, any kind of a trace or any particular focus of investigation on that particular citizen. You yeah, have to have a probable cause before you do that. But, but in, in this particular situation, there there's no constitutional protections when you're in the private space. There's a reasonable mm -hmm. expectation of privacy. So like, for instance, if you're in a public dressing room or a public bathroom, there is a reasonable expectation of privacy. But when you're out in public space, 
there's not a reasonable exp uh, um, you know uh, expectation of privacy and that was determined by the Supreme Court okay folks y'all can call in actually let me try to answer that also very specifically. sure in many of those cases that's because they have a suspect they have someone they're thinking about so they're going to go get a warrant to pull the information from the guy's cell phone from his car or other things we don't start at that level we start from the crime scene so we have no idea who is there uh, at the time of a crime so we do not say i'm going to go look at david l johnson and figure mm -hmm. out where he went today we go someone was shot at this corner we're going to follow the little box to and from the crime scene to the cars they go to we're then going to follow the cars to the house that they go to and the house that they came from we're going to try to figure out who that is because you can't get a search warrant for a dot you get a search warrant for a person we figure out who right. the person is then they can go get the search warrant to be able to search the car and search the house and get that information right let's let's go to david david you live on taxi talk how you doing hey what's up man how you doing all right what's going on well the question i had is most of the uh, uh, uh murders in the city come from uh, uh um drug situations and, and, and people on the corner messing with drugs so why would it not be that you would um you would not focus on these people well I mean, to be honest with you it's a question of the amount of time that we have right now baltimore has got 300 murder 301 murders as of today and almost a thousand shootings this year and when we fly we we see a lot of that activity and that's really what the priority is is to get those numbers down and again the other thing is the community that we've met uh over 65 community meetings so far is you know they we always get questioned are you going to stop johnny on the corner selling drugs that's not our that's not what we do um you know it, it's mostly the shootings and the murders um if the community were to say at some point when the murders and the shootings were down low enough and the community wanted to then they want it through so, the city council so at and this the mayor's point, office and your elected representatives they could increase that but to be honest with you right now we're focused on the shootings and the murders so at this point, what I believe in that fact is that I want you you saying that it's a deterrent, but I want something to happen or to prevent the murders from happening that's right. inside the cities and, and as far as the gang related stuff stuff like that. Then of yeah. course you can't do anything about uh uh that old crazy type stuff that boyfriend kill girlfriend, girlfriend kill boyfriend. <laughs> But the other but stuff those like ones, that, those ones get solved, though. He said those, those ones usually get solved. They get solved. The murders, that get solved. the murders don't get solved. That's why it's good for the eyes in the sky to be there so they can catch them Johnny on the spot. And, and, and you're right. So what we want to do is usually when people see how we go about solving the murders, how we can go from a murder scene and attract the people forward mm -hmm. over time, how we can track them past the ground-based cameras, how we show the house that they go Don't test that now. The most often response we get after showing that is, man, I'm not doing that. Right. we be right back after these messages, and we're going to bring on Zuni and Dwayne. Tomotis. Tomotis. you be next. Stay tuned for more Taxi Talk. Okay, so... um. W -O -L -B Baltimore. After the commercial, -E -E FM, HD and then we're going to come back up with our questions. So that's all. You like that? Yeah, not necessarily goals of the staff and yeah. the radio one that Thanks. sponsors for advertisers. Yeah, you say all that. Say whatever you want. I'll be coming back on 30 seconds. Here we go. You ready? All right, folks, we back. I'm Larry, the celebrity cab driver, WOLBBaltimore.com, Worldwide Web, 10, 10 a.m., WOLB, and that's number to call in, 410-481-1010, long distance, 1-877-704-1010. We're also streaming Worldwide Web. That's www.wolb.com. 
Baltimore.com. Uh, Dr. Ross with Nuts, sponsoring Taxi Talk on the line, Eyes in the Sky, Community Support, Community Solution, whatever, right, Dr. Ross? <laughs> yeah, let's bring up uh, our, our guest been holding. And, and also in the studio is uh, Charles. Our uh, guest, Zoni, what is it? Uh, Jason? Timotis. Timotis, you live. How you doing? Hey. What's happening? What's going on? All right. What do you want to talk about? Uh, we want to talk about Z Motors Auto Repair Body Shop. Man, it's a good shop to go to. You know, when when you have an accident out there on the street, the they take care of it. Good. What was the name of that again? What's the name of it? Z uh, Motors Auto Body Repair Shop, forty nine twenty four Righteous Crown Road. Righteous. Anybody okay. out there need help? We out there to do it. The number is 443 418 2942. Did you say Dr. Ross? What's that number again? 443 418 2942. And my partner, Omar. 443 546 8785. What do you guys specialize in? Just fixing them? We specialize it in body repair shop, mechanic shop, all of it is one. It's a good shop. You don't pay no deductible. If you have an accident, gotcha. very well, good, extremely good professional work. Lots of accidents, and we're coming up on the winter with the snow. And uh, you know, I think we we, we did not invest, we investigated a thumb just to see whether or not we could. But in a uh, in a, a month's worth of flying, we saw over fifteen hundred accidents. Fifteen hundred accidents. Wow. Yeah, when you ran just the numbers out of the out of the nine one one calls, we had fifteen hundred accidents within one month within our coverage. Okay, partner. Thank you. I hope everybody come over and tell them they heard it on Taxi Talk. And y'all take care, of them, right? <laughs> I know you got your radio on. Yeah. But thank you. Appreciate you. And let's go to Dwayne. Dwayne, you live talking to. Taxi Talk with Dr. Ross McNutt and Charles in the studio. How you doing? How you doing, Larry? This Shorty. Shorty. Oh, my goodness. I wish you would have said Shorty so you could have came straight on up. Shorty, guys, you got to say Shorty, Shorty. If I say Shorty on that station, sometimes I don't know. Man, you will get... You man, you oh my goodness, Shorty. When I call up Larry Young show in the morning, I don't never get on that. Shorty, you, you get on my show, Shorty, in 30 seconds. Talk to us, Shorty. This is my opinion because uh, y'all got that eye in the sky and all these tech, tech, y'all using all this technology to curb the violence. The simple answer to end all this violence is to end the war on drugs. I've been selling drugs since 1974. You got this war on drugs been going on for 50 years. And the war on drugs ain't doing nothing but killing black bodies. You send them to, it's like a two for one. One get killed, the other one go to jail. And that's basically what y'all doing. It's slavery reinvented under the it's slavery reinvented. We traded the penitentiary for the plantation cotton for cocaine and we the cash crop. They got eyes in the sky and they got eyes on the corner with them cameras already. So they already know who's doing what. And every six or five or six weeks you already see the police picking up 15, 20 people. So they already picking the cotton. They don't care about us. This is just another ploy to spend some more money that should be spent in the community instead of in the police department. You got $550 million and you give them more grants and more grants to the police, but you ain't doing nothing for the communities in which are devastated through this war on drugs. Put that well, in the let, conversation. He want to ask you something, Shorty. Hey, hey, Shorty, how many people are actually dying of overdoses in the city of Baltimore? You got overdoses in the city of Baltimore. You had overdoses on crack. Because opioids is nothing with white people. Now we supposed to be uh, excited. We supposed to care. How many people died? Do you have a number on how many people died? You let us die during the crack era. Start sending these white people to jail the same way you're sending black people to jail. Our kids been dying in a black community behind the war on drugs for 50 years. Now all of a sudden, white people are dying behind opioids and we folks to care? Dog, what about us? Where was the care concern when our kids was dying? Well, our goal is to save a lot of people's lives. Our and goal, our goal, if, y'all got if, this if, same if, steel. Our goal, if, our goal is to, to keep us oppressed. That's your goal, period. 
Well, That's how I feel. You know, y'all know I'm out in the streets. Y'all know I, I'm out here with the, the community. You know I'm in Annapolis. Dog, y'all been doing this too long. You well, don't change the... You don't change the... Heroin alone the There's over 200 people a month to heroin overdoses. Yeah, and heroin... And, 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 you got our, and you got our... You got our country. I served in the military. We protect the heroin field. We protect the cocaine field. Our government does that. The war on drugs is manufactured to kill black Americans. Address that with the eye in the sky. Well, if, if we can keep people alive and we can hold police accountable... You uh, keep people there, alive if you're in the war on drugs. Y'all can't defend my, this program. My goal is to keep y'all, it's, y'all, this program is not for the black community. This program is for the, for, for the white community to keep the black people in check. I don't see that eye in the sky in the white community. Well, it actually it covers the whole. You ain't tracking. You ain't it, tracking. It's going gonna to cover the whole city, um, Dwayne. I mean, uh, Shorty. They're going to cover the whole, the whole city, city, but we always know where the city, what, 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 what gets covered in the city. You look well, at News actually, what, Five. The only place see, we look is what community you shot. see. You're not covering the community. You, you're just using that as a superficial, official way to say that we care, and you don't. I'm the type of oh. person going to call y'all out. 2020, I'm going to call all y'all out. And they know who they are. They okay, Shorty, I got a question for you. Now, you did you come to any of these meetings, Shorty, and see how it works? Yes, I have. I've been put out of some of the meetings. I'm, I'm talking about... I'm in the room, I'm mic checking. Yes, I've been in the meetings. I've talked to Archie. Me and Archie uh-huh. talked one-on-one, okay? Uh-huh. Came up to the office and talked to Archie. So, there's actually it's 85 people per 100,000 people dying of uh, actually more than that dying of opioids in the city. That's more than... And, and, and your point is, I don't understand your point telling me the numbers of right. people are dying. There's a lot of people dying because they're... Well, then, and the war on drugs, and spend that money that you got on the war on drugs on treatment instead of incarceration. Our objective is to keep people from shooting each other. Man, they're going to shoot each other because they, they ain't got no job, dog. Well... It, crime it, breeds crime when you have... When the people are oppressed. Yeah. The problem is okay. people don't think they're going to get caught, and the statistics show that they don't. They know they caught. know the consequences of their action. Well, Criminals know what the, the consequences of their action when they commit the crime. The but, if, but if they, they only have a twenty percent conviction don't. rate, how, how many of them think they're going to get if caught? Man, you selling somebody some selling somebody a bill of goods that they ain't, ain't worth it. Y'all can y'all don't need an eye in the sky. You already got the cameras on the corners. You already got so many cameras in in America. It's ridiculous. Well, and a lot of people are putting cameras and, and, in and them cameras their are house. costing us money. The doorbell is a tremendous thing that's helping, but the thing is they're not coordinated together. And again, it, it, when we see I, a shooting occur, Larry, thank you. if it goes past the house you taking and my the call, doorbell, that but, uh, doorbell might I ain't feeling this. Right. You, get, you, you regurgitating something, and this regurgitation uh-huh. is getting boring. Have a great uh, day, Jordy. Stopping the violence, uh, have a ceasefire. Uh, let's put a plane in the sky. All this stuff about what? In the war on drugs. Because y'all spending a lot of money to to, to, to cheerlead this war on drugs. Well, uh, we're, we're actually not involved in the war on drugs. We're in a war on murder and shooting. So. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thank you, Shorty. All right. That's, hey, Brown from Sandtown. Come on. Talk to us. You know I'm going to talk to you, man. Shorty said a mouthful. So, won't, so, so let's hear from you. Have, from have you came... And this is what I believe, Al. This is what I believe, Larry. All right, can I ask you a question before you yeah. say something? Did you come to any of the meetings? Yeah, I, I went to one of the one. I went to one of the meetings. Just the same old radio talk. No, no, no. I'm talking about to show you dots and all that, and how they can catch yeah, people. To one of the presentations. Ha, ha, have you been to one of the presentations? No, I haven't been to one. See, of the that's the that's the that's the key. That's the key. I'm, I'm gonna let you talk, but that's the key. Everybody who calling a negative about this program haven't yet been to a presentation. Now, I'm, I'm listening to you. It has already been uh, implemented in other states that they run raw south. But we talking about Baltimore, Maryland, Baltimore City. And, I, and, I, and, and, and Larry, I understand your perspective because Raw is promising y'all a job. No, no, he didn't promise me no job. I'm hosting this show. But what I'm saying, Sam, Brown from Sandtown. I just wanted you to come and see a presentation. I don't need to see a presentation because when he... All right, go ahead. Let, let me hear what you guys say then. Why he was 
hands up in the air, he only they claim he only helped solve one. If he did that, right, let's say, let me hear what you guys say. Go ahead. And this, and, this, and this is what Brandon Scott put out there. Did not Brandon Scott say when you seek we flew over the city of Baltimore, a hundred murders took place while you was while you was in the air, and you and they say that you helped solve one if you helped, and they have doubt about that. And this was this was already put out there publicly. Well, how come he's still going to court in two years for, for the people who committed murder then, if he only saw one? Well, I'm just going by, I'm going by what the city council said. Right, but ask Dr. Ross the questions then. He Ask Dr. Ross the question. He on the air? Dr. Ross, is Brandon Scott lying? He said you flew for six months. Talk to me, Ross. Brandon Scott is ill-informed, so in the equivalent of 314 hours of flying, or just under two weeks worth of total flying time, we, we watched 18 shootings and five murders, and we provided information on all of them. And I look, man, somebody lying. Turn around here and I can see fine Some, look, Ross, somebody is putting out false information. So you, so you, you have to, you have to listen to both sides, and then you got to come up with a solution. Well, 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 I know what Brandon Scott said, right? In, okay, right just because Brandon Scott said that, that's mean you believe what Brandon Scott saying? Just in front of the council, right in front of his face while he was. But, but Doctor Ross saying the public get on the air. So what's the difference? Man, I, look, I'm going with Brandon Scott. Okay, so you going with Brandon Scott? All right. Ross was down there, and Ross did not defend it. Ross did not tell Brandon Scott he was wrong. Let's hear. Let's ask Ross Diddy. Let's ask him. Ross, you let's ask there him. At that let, let, all right. Let's ask him. Let 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 Doctor Ross answer your question. Give Doctor Ross a chance. Yeah. So talk to me, Ross. During the, the the open forum, we were supposed to be able to make a presentation that presented a lot of that information. And instead, Brandon Scott, uh, before it went up, it took, it took for an hour to get to us. Then we were blocked from actually making the presentation that we were asked to make. And in that presentation, yes, we had all the details on that. And we did present it verbally. We watched five murders and 18 shootings in the equivalent of about two weeks worth of camera time. And we provided tons of information. We had over 100... Well, 587 cars tracked from the scenes. Mm -hmm. Of those, we considered about 100 of them as primary vehicles. Of those, 44 of them appeared to be suspects. And of those, we ended up with 70 locations where they either started at or went to. So we had lots of information associated with those crimes. Now, because it was a test program and the Baltimore Police Department was still looking at it and figuring it out, Okay. Sometimes they didn't act on the data that we gave them, which was very frustrating. I'll give you an example. Shooting of an 88-year-old and a 92-year-old. We tracked the individual on foot for about five and a half blocks to a house. We had the officers sitting outside the house waiting to go in to knock on the door and ask and, and get the individual. And they were told not to because they didn't want to make the, the program public. Ross. Now, with this later presentation, on, we identified the person. Rock. We identified the person through the, the address. We pulled up the okay. police records at the address. Had a mugshot from the guy who listed that address out that matched the, the picture of the shooter at the shooting location from a store camera. That Rock. was a direct result of our actions there. That was one of many. Okay. Now, we didn't even get credit in the in the trial for doing that because, to be honest with you. We gave them key information, but then they had tons of information that led from that that they used in the actual trial. So that guy was convicted, got 20 years in jail. Same sort of thing with the assault on a female police officer. We tracked the guy for the two guys away. They were able to go to the location, find them sitting on the bike afterwards, arrested them. It took three solid years to go to trial. Both of those individuals confessed the morning of the trial. Ross, it would be insane knows, but won't get for, for, for this presentation that you just presented to everyone, uh -huh. if you presented all this factual information that you can prove to the police commissioner, it would yeah. be insane for anyone not to accept this program. That's 
Dad, I love you. Dad, I and, and, you know, it, what, what, what you gave us, what, what you gave us was a presentation of excellence. Yeah. Now, yeah, for some reason, the police commissioner doubted. Uh, uh, the city council doubted. Uh, 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 Jack Young is saying fly, fly at will, and his he doubted. So, Most of the city council members we've met with, when briefed in private, said we need this program. Watch, why did they now run you out of St. Louis or, or Cincinnati? Which one, Ohio? Which one they run you out of? Why What's did it? they run you up out of there? I'm not running out of Ohio. I'm right well, there. you was flying in Ohio. He, he's right standing there. right there. We did, we did a short test program in Ohio. Actually, we were showing it to the Netherlands, who was looking at it for operations over Amsterdam. And during that time frame, we solved a good number of crimes just while we were showing it to another country. So and what do you, Rob, what is the reason that this city council... So did Commissioner Davis. Commissioner Davis said he wanted it. Brown, Brown I, I have the answer to that. What, what, what is Jake uh, talking Br about? Brown, according to the articles that I read, there were several community activists as well as the ACLU that were against it, and they were in opposition just like what's going on currently in St. Louis. So it was the ACLU that came in opposition of it, and they carried a lot of weight, and they just persuaded, no, they don't want it because of the ACLU don't want it. Is that correct? Yes, but the real fact is we have polls of the citizens of Baltimore that show 76% approval of wanting it to return right now. That poll was done just a month ago. It was a scientific poll done in a scientific way. 76% approval rating of the program that returned to the city of Baltimore. And you're charging no money, is that correct? It's free? It's free for three years, and after that it's at cost for another two. If we don't do what we say we're going to do and it doesn't work to the extent that we hope it works, then we'll be, you're happy to ask us to leave, we'll pack up and go home. So, but you need work. approval from the ACL, you have to get a get a board no, first, is, is it that correct? The only role the ACLU has is in scaring the local politicians into being against it. Now, that I would argue that the ACLU is trying to scare people by saying all sorts of things that aren't accurate, and they're they're able to kowtow the local politicians against the actual public who's seventy six percent in favor of it. And actually, that's eighty percent in favor of it when you talk about African American women. Okay. Brown from Sandtown, 4.30 to 5.30 again with the eyes in the sky today. Brown from Sandtown, signing off. Thank you. All right, let's go to Marvin. Marvin, what's going on? Hey, uh, what I can address you as live? Yeah, okay, this, this, you can address me as anyone. No, man, I got to have somebody. Larry, the celebrity care driver, Taxi All Talk right. Radio. Uh, go ahead. Well, look, Larry, the celebrity care driver, listen. Mm -hmm. Taxi! You had one heated oven. Right. That oven was so hot, I could bring me a pot of chicken up there and fry it on somebody's head. <laughs> That's how hot that oven was. Sorry, right, look, man. Let's cut the chase and go straight to the point. Go ahead. And what I mean by that, stop telling the people of Baltimore City what you're going to do and just do it. Because every time when you tell them, they don't want it. See what I'm saying? Listen. You don't have to talk to nobody at Baltimore City about putting that plane out. Mm -hmm. What you got to talk to is probably the governor or the mayor. Stop, stop folks in there. What the people got to say, like, let them talk at this out. You see what I'm saying? Right. Don't waste your time and go through no arguments and lose sleep over these people on these radios. Because gotcha. it ain't worth it. And another thing is, Larry, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. While they was arguing, something was put in the place. And guess what? What? Oh, Larry, it's going to be a surprise for them. And guess what? They can't argue with it. They can't argue with this one. What's that? Let me tell you what it was. Right? It's called those new IDs. Uh-oh. You know those new IDs they got, right? Yeah, from M MVA. Yeah, the real you know ID. You know what those IDs consist of? What? I think they got trackers on it, Larry. Mm-hmm. They ain't going to say they, nothing they, about they, that. They wanted to be mandatory so bad that everybody get one. In the United so States. Huh? In the United States. That's right. So the, the thing got to carry a, a lot of things on it. Hey, guess what? That's how they were so successful to do that, Larry. What? They didn't tell nobody. Mm -hmm. They kept them out of their business. That's they right. See, that's the way y'all got to learn, man. Don't come to the public for nothing because you didn't already read that card. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Don't use it. You want something to Dr. Do? Dr. Ross. Dr. Ross got something to say to you. Yeah. Yeah, that, that goes against everything that I believe. 
And oh, by the way, to show that it wouldn't work in Baltimore, that's what Baltimore PD asked us to do three years ago. They yeah, wanted but to make you it know, very public. They did. You know something? And when Look, it came out, it was just do it like this. Listen to the radio in the morning. Notice how they have a tendency of dogging everything that come their way. They don't want it. You know what I'm saying? No, when things is true. put in place, they don't want it. So no. you know whatever you bring in, they don't want it. So start out thinking these people and just take and bring it. Just do it. Yeah, do it. Just because I'm telling you, you won't have no interference. That's how things get done. You know, I, it I don't get done by listening that. to their opinions. Half the people you're trying to listen to is out there doing what's going on. There you go. So, what I mean, you you got, it's a point in time in your life you got to eliminate, man, and go mm -hmm. on with it. What do you say, Dr. Ross? One of the big things that we're trying to do is deter people from committing the crimes in the first place. If you can show them that if you shoot somebody in the city of Baltimore, you're going to get caught, and here's how, and oh, by the way, it's going to be quick and effective, then hopefully that kid who's walking out of his house that's pissed off at his neighbor is going to walk outside and look up, see an airplane fly by, right. and say, no, maybe well, look, What's your name? And the, that's Doctor. That's Doctor Ross talking. Okay, Doctor Ross. Yes, sir. Doc, have you ever tried going to Baltimore City Zoo without no food to feed the animals? What would they do? Uh, <laughs> I've been to the zoo there. I, they eat you. <laughs> you know, listen, man. It got to be real, by Doctor Ross. You don't have to explain yeah. anything. I got Look, you. Look, you already got it. Just talk to the people who can help. All right. Well, call back at four thirty to five thirty today, Marvin. All uh, right, thank you, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Everybody, y'all can call back today, 435-30, part two, with Archie Williams. Let's go to Don. Don, what's up? We flew, we have images from 314 hours, so just under about two weeks worth of time. And so you have referred to that being the equivalency of two weeks worth of footage, is that correct? Yeah, that's two weeks worth of, if you consider it, compare it to a ground camera, um, that would be about two weeks worth of time, yes. Okay, so, you guys keep accurate records doing this test flight, you keep records and data yes. on everything that you're doing? Yeah, we've got the exact hours that we flew, we published, we provided those to the department so, so, and also the Baltimore Sun and others. So here's what I'd like to know. What was the date, what was the first date that this plane was in the air, the last date that it was in the air during that test period? Uh, we, there was a short test period between January 18, 2016 and February 20th, 2016. And then we came back out about June 15th to about August 15th. So, but again, it was a limited test flight. We weren't flying as much as we, we would. and uh, But we fly one mission a day instead of two, so it would probably be about five, five and a half hours a day, depending on, right. and, and not every day. Okay, and so in that, that time frame, we watched five murders and 18 shootings within the coverage area. Gotcha. However, that's interpretation because when you continue to say the equivalency of two weeks, that kind of paints the picture in some people's mind that the plane was only up for two weeks. But thanks for answering the question that the first flight that this plane was in usage was in January, and the January last date that it was ever in usage was in August. Yeah, but again, we weren't there from February through June. I got you, but I just want to okay. separate equivalency from yeah. the exact yeah. time period that, and, and, and not the number of days and how many times a week, the time period that right. this test operation was in process. So what do you think so about you, it, Don? So, so, so whether, you, whether you grounded it for three weeks and took it back up again for two days and then grounded it again for a month and took it back up for a day and a half, that's yeah. kind of superfluous to me. I would. Okay. I was interested in knowing when the first flight was, when the last flight, and any any information about data you want to give me between those two dates. Okay, it's fine. Yeah. But well, I just want it to be understood that this whole equivalency thing 
does not necessarily meet out what the exact dates and time period was that this operation was in process. Correct. But when you look at it, and if you want to, if you want to know how many shootings you saw per hour of operation, that's what that's what we're getting at. In, in the equivalent of t- two weeks worth of operations, two weeks worth of data, murders and eighteen shootings within our coverage area. And there's other ones that we didn't have enough information on. Okay. But those are the ones that we did. Some days we'd have two shootings. All right. Day well. Within our coverage area. And the other thing I'll point out is that the donor has offered three aircraft uh-huh. for up to 50 hours a week. And so the, what that means is every week we would be getting about that number of, of things. So we're looking at, you know, given the statistics in Baltimore. we got two minutes. Over 100 murders a year in our coverage area. And part two. If we solve a hundred murders a year. That's more murders. If we if we just provided information on a hundred murders right. distributed to solving them, that's more murders than Baltimore is currently solving. Now part two, four thirty to five thirty with Archie Williams. Now we have uh, Charles. You want to wrap it up? You got a, a minute? That's in a minute to say oh, what's th- going thank on. Thank you. Uh, Doctor Ross has convinced me he's got a very good piece of technology there. We've already got uh, City Watch cameras. They uh, solved a murder on my street. A uh, fellow beat, beat his girlfriend to death, and uh, the, the uh, camera convicted him. So more power to you on that. As far as the war on drugs is concerned, sort is right. A war on drugs turns out to be a war on people sometime. Uh, but he's not right about color. I'm a blind man, and I do not care what color you are. If, if you should, and I don't care what color anyone is either. I can't tell from my images. And all I care about is that if someone shoots somebody, I, I am all in favor of not messing with anybody. I'm a civil libertarian. You don't mess with anybody. They, they do their own thing. But if you shoot somebody or murder somebody, I believe that you need to go to jail. Right. And you need to stop shooting and murdering people. Right. And that's, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm all for deterrence. I'm all for letting people live. I'm all for jobs. But if, when you shoot somebody, that's when you've crossed that line. Right. And and, and if, you know, if they see a plane, if they want to shoot, they're going to say, I can't shoot them. It's a plane going to catch me. That, so that's that that's the key. Right. That, it is more important for me to deter someone from shooting somebody because not only do I save the victim, I save their family to grief. Oh, I know. I save the shooter and their family the grief of getting caught, right. arrested, and put in jail. And then you don't have the money to bury them. You got to hustle up money to get, get them buried. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's, it's a lot coming behind killing somebody. But, you know, you think about it. The kid who grows up in, in Harlem Park has had 715 people shot within a mile of them. 264 people murdered within a mile of them. Since yeah, that's off, of, that's off of um, that's Emerson. Gone. Park. I don't know what that does to your mental, mental psyche. we got to get the problem down in Baltimore. We're already over 300 murders this year. Wow. We'll be lucky to stay under 345 murders. What's that website? What's that website? Uh, communitywithsolutions.com. Communitywithsolutions.com. Today at 430 to 530, you're going to hear Dr. Ross again, so y'all can call back in. And I'm Larry the Celebrity Care Driver Wireless. My number, 443-839. 8412. See you next week. Same time. But don't don't forget. Today, 4.35.30. Thank you, Dr. Ross. Yes, sir. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And thank you, Charlie. Happy Friday. Appreciate you. Be well. Be Be well. well. All right, folks. Have a great day. Stop the killing. Thank you, Jason. All right, folks. All right. All right. Stop the killing. Stop the killing. Stop it! You will get caught. You will get caught. Have a great day, folks. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for tuning in. I love you. Be peace. Be blessed. Thank you.